hi and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today's great feat will be trying not to freeze in this windy, windy weather, but I had to move spots. I was somewhere really pretty before and it was just too windy. So speaking of moving around, windiness and being mobile, what I'd really like to talk to you today in terms of manifestation is going to be attachment and detachment and when to detach and all of these things. And I really have a lot to say on that because I'm a very focused, single-minded person. So when I want something, I really want it. And I have incredible willpower. So you just have to take it from me. If there's anybody in the world that could not come to terms with the notion of detachment when it comes to manifestation, it's your girl. I really didn't get it. I thought it was the dumbest thing I'd ever heard. Why would you want something if you weren't supposed to try to have it, try to want it, appreciate it, think about it? It just seemed so backwards and it kind of seemed false. I kind of thought, oh, you know, the law of attraction or these teachers are trying to trick me into not wanting what I want. What's that about? You know, but it's true and it really, really works. So I'll give you a few examples. So one came from a seminar from um, Abraham Hicks where they said a woman went up to them once and asked, Abraham, I think you want me to have so much fun before my lover gets here that I don't even care if they show up or not. And they said, that's exactly what we want you to do. So I've had some amazing questions the last few weeks. And in my own life, I had people say, but then why does this happen? And then why does that happen? You know, can you explain it? And I thought, yes, I can explain it. But the biggest takeaway from anything to do with the creation of your own life is that it's you doing it. So you choose what works best for you. I really can't, I can't honestly tell you that, you know, affirmations work or they don't work and Neville Goddard said this and this person said that. It's up to you. It's up to you what you say. It's up to you what you do. I've defied such things, you know, for a long time. For example, sometimes I really want something and if I say to myself, I already have whatever, you know, I don't know, some car or something, okay? I have it, I have that car, I have that car, I have that car. It, it bums you out because it just reminds you that you don't have it. But if you said, oh, I really want that car, and then you feel comfortable in the wanting, you start to see things open up. Maybe your friend goes to test drive one, invites you along or something. But things like that just sort of start to happen, and it just feels really nice. So you can... You can play around with the words, you can play around with the techniques or the teachings. It doesn't just have to be one thing or nothing, you know. You can take the advice of people here and there, but ultimately what works for you is exactly that. It's what works for you. So in terms of detachment, detachment is just the rule. It's going to work for everyone. So this is one of those things where people are very, very relaxed. You know, everybody knows somebody who's just like very chill. And if I might use the stereotype of a 90s movie, you know, a very happy-go-lucky high school, everybody's been to high school at some point, so like your, your local, you know, skate park stoner or something like that, and they're just like happy, and they're just laid back. I'm not endorsing that anyone do anything such as something like that, but ultimately, oh my god, snow, and I got that on camera, wonderful, the first one of the season, here it is, well, it is for me where I live, but the people who are happiest, who are just really unaffected, you know, they they do tend to manifest quite easily because they're never really distracted by what's around them. So I'll give you a very good example on why detachment is so important. And if you're interested in a technical teacher, I would really, really recommend that you look up Bashar, channeled by Daryl Anka. Now, he says, and this is quite, quite amazing, he says, the human mind is not designed to know how something will happen. The human mind is designed to tell you and to understand what has already happened. It cannot know how something is going to happen. It only knows what has already happened. That's its limitation and understanding. So this is where detachment comes in. You let go because the more you try to understand how you're going to get that job, how you're going to get that car, how you're going to get proposed to, if you propose, if the person's going to say yes, the more you stiffen your thoughts and then they turn into things, you stiffen your vibration, in the not having of that thing. So if you relax, then it can come to you. So this is the important thing. If you're manifesting, let's say a partner, a car, a house, an opportunity, finding something on the ground, if you're trying to actively manifest it, and this is another thing, the interval of time that you do this it depends for every person and for every subject. So for me, sometimes I think about something once and I just think, oh, that's, you know, quirky and amusing. And the next day I have it or the same day I have it. And then 
the level of resistance I have to something else could take a month, it could take a year. So everyone is different in this sense because everything that you want, you feel differently towards. So you'll notice when you start your manifestation journey, maybe you're able to manifest small things. Everybody always starts with you a cup of coffee, someone getting you lunch, waving at you in the street, whatever, versus what they consider to be bigger things like houses and cars. And you know, Abraham always says, it's as easy to create a castle as it is a button. The energy is the same. Dr. Ernest Holmes has said, there's no difference in energy that your mind possesses between the acquiring of a penny or a billion dollars, none. The difference is what you think is possible and what you believe to be limited. So in terms of detachment, in terms of trying to make something happen, if you're scripting, journaling, tapping, whatever, if it starts to feel like work, you need to take a break. Another thing, if you feel guilty for not doing it, if you feel, if I don't wake up at six, journal, affirm, script, meditate, yoga, drink this, have that, whatever, then it's not gonna happen. Well, you're just, honestly, you're pumping it full of resistance. So sometimes that's why people take a break or they're too, like what I used to do, and I still do sometimes, is I get so uh, exhausted <laughs> being the way that I am. I get, I'm very like fiery and intense and passionate and I just tire, I just get exhausted. I wipe myself out. I'm just exhausted. And I think I literally cannot think about this thing anymore. I've beaten it to death. It doesn't bring me joy. Thinking about it makes me feel indifferent or disgust now. I don't want it anymore. And then when it shows up, I don't want it anymore. You know, and it's like, I could have done that joyfully, but I was so anxious thinking about it and uh, researching it or whatever, that by the time I land in the city I want to be in, I'm on the vacation I want to be on, I'm just like, lame, you know, so you don't, you don't have to take it to that level. So if you're a very extreme personality type, it's just better to catch that in the earlier parts of your manifesting. But now let's say you've wanted something for a very long time and it hasn't come to you in a very long time. Acknowledging that kind of delays it. Let's say delay. I don't like that word so much, but try to detach. So try to think if, if I haven't had it in 10 years or a year, then what's another month or another week? So if I just let it go for a week or a month, it won't make any difference in your reality. Your day-to-day -day life won't change whatsoever. So in that case, just let it go. Okay, if it's a million dollars, if it's a spouse, if it's a, a, body, a bodily condition or something like that, what's another day, what's another week? If you've gone this far without it, just try not bothering with that. And just because you detach from trying to make something happen doesn't mean that you don't want it anymore. So Neville has, you know, amazing analogies and many of the teachers that have come forward who are spreading his work, uh, I'm sure you've heard of, it's called dropping the seed. So it's about detachment and you can find so many things on this. So please go and look it up. But basically, let's say the analogy of planting something, which is dropping the seed really is. So if you, if you want to, first of all, what you think and what you expect must line up. So Jerry Hicks from uh, Abraham Hicks used to say, you can't plant an ear of corn and expect a tulip. So that's the first thing. You cannot say, I want to be married so that I'll be happy or I want to be happily married. And then everywhere you look around, you're always saying, women are this, I don't trust them, men are garbage, blah, 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 blah. You cannot plant the seed of future marital happiness and then on the journey to watching that thing sprout, stomp on it every single day. And then when it comes out mangled and it's the wrong species of plant, you're like, how did that happen? As Abraham says, nothing turns out any different than you expect ever. So you have to be very mindful of your narrative and your dialogue, okay? Are you watching movies with love sickness? It's not gonna help you. If your friends are in distress and they call you, you can listen to them and help them through their relationship issues, but you don't have to let that in your spirit. If you want more help with that, please go watch the videos I did dissecting Abraham Hicks's first book, A New Beginning, where they speak about how to navigate conversations energetically so you don't allow something into yourself, okay? So that's very important. Now, dropping the seed. So you plant a desire. Okay, and it's a very good analogy because as we know, the subconscious mind is very, very fertile. So it acts, you know, as a womb or a field and it's got this fertile soil. So we're gonna grow something. 
So you choose what you want to grow. You have desire. Maybe you see a movie. Maybe you overhear a conversation. You see a TikTok of uh, you know somebody doing something seemingly superhuman for their mate and you go, wow, I really want that. I want that in a partner. I want self-awareness and strength and a wickedly good sense of humor. Great. So you drop that seed. It's gone into the ground. You cover it up. And now what do you do? This is the part of your mind that's not designed to figure it out. This is the part where faith kicks in. So you have to have faith. You have to detach and let the divine do what it does. The universe is just a mechanism. This is how it functions. So when you let go, now it's able to get to work. But if you're there obsessing and thinking about it, it can't enter the field and do what it needs to do while you're watching. And as we know, the observer effect, if you watch something, then it changes how it behaves. This is why what you want doesn't come to you when you incessantly obsess about it, when you've got, you know, this like chokehold over it. So let it go. This is the part where you do literally nothing. And then one day you're just going to walk outside your front yard and see that a beautiful flower has bloomed, sunflower, whatever it is that you've planted. Now, in terms of speaking to other people, because I did mention talking to other people, one thing I wouldn't recommend is surely telling people, you know what, I watched Monica's videos or whoever, and uh, they said to do this and like, oh, it's been a week. They're all liars. Where is it? Because when you watch, they say watch pot never boils. Okay. So if you watch it, then obviously it can't really, it can't really come to you because now it's going to change how it behaves because you're staring at it anxiously, such as like, ah, oh, it's supposed to be here. Where is it? And then the universe goes, oh, you don't see it. Well, then don't see it some more. Well, then don't see it some more. Well, then don't see it some more and so forth. So just be mindful of that. When you let go, you really have to let go. So for this, I do recommend Dr. Ernest Holmes. He gives some really good discourse on letting go. And what he says is same, uh, this is really good uh, in, and very much in alignment with the sex and spiritual path book that I'm going through right now by Edgar Casey and Dr. Herbert Puryear. Um, you know, and he says, creative energy is all things. It's your emotion, it's your speech, it's your action, and it's your mental energy. It's your God-given human imagination. Therefore, when you let go, that doesn't mean that you cease to be productive. You cease to be creative. You simply focus your mental energy on something else, you know? Dr. Holmes says to become enthralled in anything that gives you joy. So do something creative, do a jigsaw puzzle, paint, go for a walk, cook, you know, engage in conversation with people. But you shift your energy, from your mental energy from the desire. You leave it alone and you go be productive and creative in another way. And then it helps this thing grow and cultivate. So just because you're not thinking about it or obsessing over it, does not mean that it's like, oh, she forgot about it. So it's just gonna die, it's gonna like freeze. It's like, no, that's what it takes to grow. So I leave you with this, it's the best thing I've ever heard and Neville Goddard said it. He says, do nothing, know what you want, plant the seed once and then do nothing. No more than you would lift a finger after finding out that you're pregnant. The baby grows itself. And how do you support your pregnancy? By minding your own business. You take care of your health, you stay hydrated, you sleep, you rest. Okay. You don't actively make PowerPoints and then point powerfully being like today is toes. Tomorrow is, you know, ligament. The day after that, it's going to be back and then skin. And then no hair follicles. No eyelashes. No, stop. You do nothing. You simply support yourself. So you plant the desire and then support yourself. Do something you enjoy. And if you really struggle with this, this is where meditation comes in. And second best to that is napping. So if you're someone who gets five hours of sleep a night, you really want to aim for seven. Because when you disconnect your conscious mind from your desire, you're allowing it to do what it needs to do. So there's your homework. Go listen to Ernest Holmes. Go listen to Neville Goddard and go listen to Prashar, channeled by Daryl Anka. As always, I really hope that this helps. Thank you so much for being here, and I'm going to go answer some of your questions. You can find me on TikTok, read my articles on Medium, and yeah, thank you for writing in, thank you for emailing, and I'll see you around. Bye-bye.